what is going on guys welcome to uh what is essentially a brand new series uh on the channel we are here back on motorsport manager 3 we have got the 2021 mod set up i've done i'm really excited for this i've done so much work building this mod uh so much more work than i did with the uh the 2021 as well so hopefully you'll see uh, this this series a bit more refined a little bit better than than last season was but but yeah I want to dive straight into it I'm really really excited to show you guys what I've done uh, I hope you like it um, I'm going to try and keep this as to the point as possible but I get this first episode is going to be quite long so I will put timestamps in the description if you just want to jump to a specific point if you don't care about how I made the mod if you don't care if you know you don't want to see the liveries I've done or the driver ratings I've done uh, if you just want to jump straight to the race, you can do that. Uh, so that'll be in the description. You'll be able to jump through the video, uh, hopefully, and do that. But yeah, here we are, guys. Uh, you'll have seen it in the thumbnail and in the description. Uh, but we are managing the Aston Martin Cognizant. Cog Cognizant? I'm just going to avoid saying that. Uh, we're managing Aston Martin. Uh, as I said, if any of you watched the uh, kind of pre-season video where I talked about my plans for the channel and my plans for the series, it was between Aston Martin and Alpine, uh, and I've ended up going for Aston Martin. A, a big deciding factor in this was the fact that Arav, uh, Arava had already done or is doing an Alpine save. I don't really know what's going on with that. I haven't paid too much attention to it, but... Uh, and I know that we're on dramatically different levels, but I just didn't want to saturate YouTube with the same content. I figure uh, if you found this, then you more than likely know of Arava. Um, so yeah, basically just didn't want to look like I was copying him. Also, uh, I have been a long-term fan of this team uh, through Racing Point Force India and uh, as far back as Jordan, they were the first team that I would say I really supported in Formula One. Um, so yeah, that's why we've gone with Aston Martin. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't quite get the same shade of green that they are using. This is my uh, take on the livery. I'll put the actual livery of each car up on the screen as well so you can kind of see what I've done uh, and how I've made this livery. But yeah, we've got Lance Stroll, uh, I think I've been quite generous in giving him four stars, but he impressed me on a number of occasions last season. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, he's still young, hopefully in real life. Uh, this year, he can improve on his performances and really show everyone that he is actually not a terrible driver. Um, but yeah, I, I might have been a little bit generous because I'm a bit biased because I'm managing this team, but I've given him four stars. And Vettel... Um, <laughs> I've made him bold, Vettel. Uh, I forgot I did that. <laughs> um, I've given him four and a half stars. I think uh, I'm surprised that we haven't got the reached peak thing yet and that he's not going to retire, which is uh, quite interesting. But yeah, I've given him four, four and a half stars with a potential of five stars. Because obviously, you know, he's a four-time world champion. He still has the potential and the ability in there. So that is us. That is Aston Martin. Let's have a look at what I've done with the other teams. So... Mercedes, AMG, Petronas. We've obviously got Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. Absolutely no doubt Lewis Hamilton is five stars out of five stars. He has reached his peak though, which uh, if you watch the 2020 modded career, you'll see the same thing happened uh, in that one. He reached his peak and then he retired at the end of the season. Uh, and he actually failed to win his seventh world championship in that. So he's won his seventh world, champ world championship here. Is he going to get his eighth? I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one. You'll see here with the livery as well. This is probably the furthest away I would say I've gone from the real life livery um, by putting the, the kind of teal turquoise color at the top of the car. My reason behind this is you'll see here if I go on to edit, um, the primary color has to be the first, like that's what determines the team color. So, you know, in an ideal world, I would have made this red because of the Ineos sponsorship i would have probably gone with this kind of red that looks a lot closer but obviously if i'd have done that then the team would be red colored they'd be wearing red overalls it just wouldn't work so i've gone with this uh i still think it's pretty close 
gets the job done. There's Mercedes, let's move on. Now here we go, here's a new one for you, Alpine. Uh, I'm quite happy with what I've done with this livery. I think this is quite accurate to what the real life livery is. Obviously we've got Ocon again. I've given him four stars with a potential of four and a half. I don't think he's really shown his full potential yet. S certainly not in Renault last year. And then Fernando Alonso, who uh, actually, he's got a potential of five stars. I gave him four and a half stars, which again, I think is generous for someone who's not really sat in an F1 car for two years, three years, two years. I don't know. But either way as well, he's old. So uh, I gave him four and a half stars, but actually I think he won whatever championship he was racing in before coming into F1. So obviously he has the stat boost. Uh, so the first few races, he's gonna have a bit of a stat boost, but from there he's probably gonna drop off because he's reached his peak as well. Uh, which I kind of think is gonna be the opposite to real life. I think. If anything, it's gonna take him a bit longer to get up to speed in the season and his performances, I predict, will probably be better towards the end of the year, but we'll see. It's all speculation. This is all just my opinion so far. So moving on, Red Bull. Uh, Sergio Perez, four and a half stars. Uh, I think that's fair. Max Verstappen, five stars. I, I'm quite comfortable with this. I think I've done a pretty good job with their livery. This season, I swapped around the colors of Alpha Tauri and Red Bull because even though in real life on the the timing sheets, the Alpine, the Alpine, the Alpha Tauri always has the darker blue and the Red Bull has the lighter blue, it's just not the case. Like the, the Red Bull car is almost an indistinguishable shade of blue. Like it's so dark. Uh, and yes, the Alpha Tauri blue is dark, but it, I don't think it's as dark as the Red Bull. So for this save, I've swapped them around. So the Red Bull has the darker blue car and the Alpha Tauri has the lighter blue car of the two. Obviously it's still a dark blue, but yeah, there we go. That's Red Bull. Ferrari, the only team that as of recording this haven't revealed their livery. So this is just based on last year's car. Obviously when Ferrari do reveal their livery, um, I will update this. Uh, I'm recording this on the 8th of March, by the way. I waited as long as I could for all of the all of the liveries to come out. I wanted to make it, I think I said in the the, uh, the video I did before, that I wanted to make it as, as true to life as possible. But, um, but yeah, also on top of that, I've been ludicrously busy. I just started a full-time job and I've got my unit assessments coming up. And but This kind of fell down the priority list, but I have been very, very excited to do it. So. We got the Ferrari, Science Junior, very close to five stars there. I, once again, I assure you, he's actually four and a half stars, but he has some uh, some stat boosters going on. I think he's happy to be at Ferrari or something. I, d I don't know. Uh, and then Charles Leclerc, five star. I think the only three five star drivers on the grid are Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, and Lewis Hamilton. So it's gonna be interesting as well. I um, Actually, I don't think I have shown it yet. Uh, but I'm actually in the year 2021 on the save. So I've played through two seasons of this save, uh, which I'll touch on why in a few minutes. Um, should probably have scripted this out. But yeah, I'm in 2021. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the Ferrari car is like on this because the base team of Ferrari on this game is quite quick. Uh, and I have kind of like, manufactured myself the the performances that the cars should be at um but it's still going to be interesting to see what they've done because obviously in real life as well you you don't know yet because the whole issue last year was the engine supposedly so if that's resolved this year if there's nothing stopping them from being back at where they were they could be a lot quicker so again interesting now here we have mclaren uh, I don't think I've changed the livery at all from last year because in real life it doesn't really look like they've changed the livery at all. Um, they're going to be very interesting in this save. Uh, I think they're quite quick. Obviously you've got Daniel Ricciardo who we know can pull a performance out of the bag and he's very close to five stars as well. I think he also has some stat boosters because I think he's four and a half stars with five star potential at the moment. Another point I want to make uh, just while I'm going through these is that the 3D car models on this game are a little bit funny, which I meant to say this actually with the Mercedes one, in that it won't really make that much difference when you see them on the track because the game is kind of designed with a top-down view. 
so side pods little details don't really impact too much it's more the main color of the car that is the the overarching factor so uh, you know the mercedes will predominantly be black the mclaren will predominantly be orange you won't really see the blue on the 3d model of the car when it's on the track um which i don't think is an issue you can still decipher which car is which um hopefully i haven't i haven't done a race with these updated liveries yet so this is a new experience for us all once you see this race that will be the first race i do with these updated car liveries so it's going to be interesting to see what they actually look like out on track but yeah the mclaren will predominantly be orange but it's a side point obviously not much else has changed they've still got norris it's got a decent potential same livery moving on alpha towery now this was a hard one to replicate because, I mean, sometimes I wish the game would give me, you know, better, uh, better car liveries, better, like more options uh, for car liveries. But we have to make do with the seven or something that it gives us. But um, yeah, this was a hard one to recreate. Like I said, I've given them the lighter blue. I don't think it makes too much difference. Uh, but this is one of my favorite liveries on the grid this year. I think this is a really striking livery. I think it's really good. Uh, I think I've done Pierre Gasly a little bit dirty with his rating there. I think I probably should have given him four and a half stars. Um, but he's only 25. He's got the four and a half star potential. He should be there in no time. Yuki Sonoda, I've given him quite a decent rating as well. Hard to judge his potential uh, as of now. But three and a half stars, I think, is the strongest of any of the, the rookies. I think he might be on the same level as Mick Schumacher. Definitely better than the other thing. Um, but yeah, he's uh, three and a half stars. I think out of all the rookies this season, he has the best shot of kind of hitting the ground running um, and, and just cracking on with it. We know that from last year, the Alpha Tauri car is quite quick. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he definitely has the backing of Honda behind him. And I, I just think he has the best shot in 2021 of putting in a good showing and a good performance and i think he kind of needs to expect it, you know that red bull program is very cutthroat i think the other two um schumacher and unfortunately mazepin have a you know a much easier kind of future in formula one i don't think mick schumacher's going to be dropped out of formula one anytime soon and uh, daddy mazepin just like Daddy Stroll is probably going to keep keep Nikita around for quite some time. But yeah, that's the Alfa Tauri. Uh, Alfa Romeo. Now this, uh, this is my favourite livery on the grid this year by a long way. I, I, I've never really been interested in the Alfa Romeo livery. It's, it, I've never found it that inspiring or striking. But who knew? All they had to do was invert it and it would be like my favourite livery on the grid. But uh, you can see here, I've done my best to replicate it. I initially tried to do it with the the red side pod only, but it, it would have made the base color white, not red, so I ended up doing it this way. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen, I've given him four stars. I I don't really rate him at this point, I'm not gonna lie. He just seems to be there for the, because I don't, I don't know. I don't know why he's still there, to be honest. I think he's just taken up a seat that some, that some junior driver could have, but you can see he's reached his peak. He's going to retire in the game at the end of the season. So we will have new drivers after that. And Giovinazzi, I think, I think he's kind of hit his potential. Uh, as sad as that is to say, I'd love to see him do better, um, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think he's kind of hit the point he's going to get to. He's there. He's a good driver, but I don't think he's ever going to set the world on fire. Do I ever think he's going to get to a Ferrari? No. Um, do I think if he got dropped by Alfa Romeo, he get picked up by someone else? No. Um, so yeah, four stars. <laughs> and then we have the Williams. I think this is the, the final one, I believe. Yeah, this was a really hard livery to recreate. They went to town on this. This looks like an F1... 2020 my team base livery you know when they haven't unlocked anything better through the podium pass yet and to be honest my first thought of it i really didn't like it i looked at it and i was like that's a mess but the longer i looked at it the more i liked it 
Um, I really like the front, the way they've designed it to look like the 90s Williams. I really like how in the stripes they've got the white W logo. I think that's really, really clever. Um, yeah, I don't hate it. I, I actually don't hate it. It's very, it's definitely polarizing like the Mercedes. I think people are gonna be like, love it or hate it. Um, I don't hate it. I, I can I can deal with it. Um, and yeah, I really, really hope this year actually that they can improve and can start to get better performances. Obviously they've invested a lot of money. Um, they've still got George Russell. He's been there long enough now that hopefully you can just score some points for the team. But, but yeah, we'll see how they do in this save. Obviously Russell, I've given him four stars. Obviously I didn't want to overdo it. Uh, I think a lot of people will probably come at me for this because you know, when he was in the Mercedes, he really showed that he has the ability. Uh, but I've given him five star potential. He will get there. He's still very young. Nicholas Latifi, uh, I think I've done him a bit dirty. He did have some very good performances last season. Um, and we, we you can't really judge his potential uh, in a Williams, especially when he's up against someone like George Russell, who obviously is world championship material. Um, but yeah, that's the Williams. And uh, I totally forgot, I thought the Williams was the last one. We have the Russian flag Haas, which uh, again was quite a difficult livery to replicate, but uh, but yeah, this is what I've gone with. Uh, they've got Mick Schumacher, who is actually three and a half stars. He's the same rating and potential as Yuki Tsunoda, but he obviously has the perks from being the Formula 2 champion. So he's closer to four star right now which again will give him a nice boost at the start of the season so it'll be interesting to see where he comes in these opening few races and then they've got that thing um three stars worst rated driver on the grid <laughs> don't really want to stay on that for too much longer but yeah there we are that's all the teams so as I said, I've played through a few seasons, so we've been able to kind of set up the season a little bit better than, than I was uh, when I did the last one. Obviously, when I played the 2020 game, uh, the 2020 mod, you'll have seen it was actually in the year 2019 because I just jumped in straight away onto a save and started off as it was. But as it is, I've been able to update the calendar a little bit to what something resembling the 2021 calendar. So we kick things off in Bahrain with the Bahrain Grand Prix, just like in real life. Then we go to Germany for Tondela or Portimao. Then we've got Netherlands. Uh, I actually can't remember what the proper calendar is and I can't remember if we're racing at Zambor this year or not, but I've put it there. Um, it's kind of a little bit, I don't know, a little bit like Imola. It's just a European race early in the year. Obviously, Monaco, Canada, Silverstone, uh, Germany, which I don't think we're racing in Germany this year, which is a, a massive shame because either Hockenheim or the Nürburgring would be great. But uh, I didn't have, uh, on this game, you can only change one race per season. So I've only managed to do two changes. So I didn't have uh, enough opportunity to change that yet. Then we've got Spa, Monza, Singapore, United States, and Doha to round out the calendar, which is obviously Abu Dhabi. Um, two other interesting things that I'm doing this season involving the calendar are, I'm gonna do reverse grids. So in real life, I think they abandoned the idea of reverse grids, but they are planning to do three sprint race qualifyings dotted around this year. And I believe that one of them is Canada and one of them is Monza. I can't remember what the other one is, but so for that case, instead of doing the sprint races, because that's not a possibility in this game, at Canada and at Monza or Milan, I'm gonna do reverse grids. So that is something to look forward to. Round five and round nine, we're gonna spice it up a little bit. Uh, and by that point, the championship will be in full swing. So that could really affect things um, and really shake things up. You know, we'll have a Haas and a Williams on pole position and you know on the front rows of the grid instead of Mercedes and Red Bull and whatever else so uh, so yeah that could really shake things up that's going to be really interesting but that is something we're going to do um, so yeah let me know if you're excited
As I said, again, we are in 2021. I've played two seasons of the game and that has allowed me to develop the headquarters, which I think is more realistic. I think last time when we were Alpha Tauri, they'd come from Toro Rosso, which was Minardi, and they've never really, I know they have a good, good facilities now, good headquarters, but they've never been a top, top team. Um, and, you know, they do operate under Red Bull. They don't have that top budget or anything. So it was, it made more sense to start from scratch really. But this time, uh, I feel like with the team in the position it's in, it didn't really make sense to come into F1, you know, as a back marker with a bad car and a bad headquarters. So I have gone, as I've played the game, I've upgraded things kind of to the point where I feel like it should be. So we have done a lot of work on the part development um, then we've gone down here into the drivers. We've got a few of these upgrades. Uh, we've got the weather facility sorted uh, over this side as well. We've got the logistics and down here, we've got a few of the financial ones, which again, you could see at the top, we've got a fairly hefty budget coming into this, uh, into this season. And I think that again is realistic given the fact that we're operating you know, under the Aston Martin branding with Lawrence Stroll as the boss. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of money sat around there. So I do think th that it's realistic. Uh, we've also managed to go in and do uh, a, quite a lot of the supplier network. So you'll see here we have a base uh, up in Canada. Uh, we also obviously have conquered a lot of Europe, um, given that we are that team from Silverstone you know so again i think these are just some some realistic little things that i've been able to do by spending a little bit longer preparing this save and you'll be able to see here as well we've got a full load of sponsors which obviously wasn't available to us when we did the 2020 mod with alpha towery because we had to unlock the sponsor slots and you know we had to build up our team's reputation but obviously this time we're walking into a team that already has a reputation and you know, clearly has sponsors after them, you know. Uh, so yeah, we have a very high team sponsor appeal actually, and that is gonna really help us, even though you can see at the moment we're losing 2.1 million per race uh, before, bon you know, before bonuses. Um, you know, we're still comfortable financially, it's still okay. And the final thing that I have to talk about, I, I think this is the final thing that I have to talk about uh, before we get into a race. I know it's it's been a long video already and I do apologize. And like I said, the timestamps are there. If you want to skip through, you just fast forward it. I, I don't mind. This is more for the diehard people that want to know, like if you want to do this yourself or you want to know exactly what's going on in the save. But, but yeah, you will see here, uh, on the rule screen, uh, engine development is unlocked, front wing development is unlocked, rear wing development is unlocked. God, I can't, this is so hard to navigate with a controller. Um, gearbox development is unlocked, but we have spec suspension and spec brakes. So that is because obviously in real life, they have the token system, uh, the cars have been carried over, so there's no work that can be done on certain elements of the car. So I've decided to go with suspension and brakes. Uh, in terms of uh, the token system, in real life they have two tokens that they can spend. I'm going to kind of treat it this way, so engine development and gearbox development will be unlocked up until round six, and then it will be locked for the second half of the season, at which point the focus will switch to the 2022 car, that's obviously when you can start investing in next season's car, you know, at the halfway point of the season. Um, so that's how I'm going to play it. Basically, teams can only upgrade those in the first half of the year. After that, 2022 car, leave the 2021 car to bed. Although I will allow front wing and rear wing development. I think there's aerodynamic work is allowed all the way through the season. I think, don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% clued up on the way it all works. I've just tried to kind of simulate what's going on in real life as best I can this season uh, with what I can do with the rules. So. Yeah, that is the final thing I believe that I have to talk about. With that being said, let's progress the calendar and let's move on to our first race weekend. Uh, we are coming in here then for the Bahrain Grand Prix. I think we're gonna be quite reserved um, with our first, 
first race and just say 11th or above, I think. I think that I think this is the safest option for us to go with. I don't know where we're actually going to be in terms of in terms of performance in this race. So, yeah. That's what we're going to go with. We're going to dive into qualifying. I may have failed to mention as well actually. We are on the Nintendo Switch for this. Uh, I I, I kind of just figured people watched the video I did before. We are on the Nintendo Switch which is kind of why I've talked through a lot of the way I set this up because um, a lot of people last season asked me for the mod, which I can't share this time. I can't share the save game files from my Switch. Um, so if you want to create this and you've watched the video so far, you should kind of know how you could see all the car liveries, you can see the abilities. Um, yeah, here we go then. It's been a long winter. It has indeed. I am very excited for F1 to come back. Will Haas F1 team managed to get a few wins this year. I, I think whoever's writing for JTV Sport needs to be fired because they clearly don't watch F1. So we're going to dive in to qualifying here. We get to see the cars on the track for the first time. I am very excited. Who are we going to send out first? It's obviously going to be Sebastian Vettel, isn't it? Let's get some of these cards in and see what happens. Now, if you recall, in the 2020 modded save, I did start to skip through qualifying and just show you kind of an overview of what was going on. I probably will do that in later races, but for now, it's the first race. We're just gonna, you know, we're gonna do this properly. It's so fun, like, oh, I just love, I love seeing the other cars out. I think there was an Alpine in there and, ah. Oh. Like I said, I haven't done uh, a race yet with these, you know, with these cars on the track. This is a risk. Are we going to get it done? We do indeed. Go on, Mark Stroll's mechanics. Right, let's follow Sebastian Vettel on his outlap. Look at that dark green and pink uh, Aston Martin. I absolutely love that. We've got Sainz Jr. in that Ferrari following us round. Uh, he looks to have a little bit more pace than us at the moment, which is a bit worrying, but we are only on the outlap, so who knows? Let's see where Stroll is. Has he got anyone near him? Yeah, Alonso in the Alpine driving around behind him. You can see that light blue car. Oh, it's making me so excited. Right, Sebastian Vettel, he has got sights all over his rear end here, tailing around this lap. He has gone, uh, he's gone purple in the second sector, actually, which is very impressive. Ocon's gone a second quicker than Schumacher. We've gone half a second quicker than Ocon and Sainz Jr. 0.43 behind Vettel, so very close. Stroll can only manage fourth behind Alonso and Ricardo. You can see Schumacher, Mazepin. Russell is slower than Mazepin and Schumacher, and so is Raikkonen on their first laps. So into the pits, here we come. We have actually outperformed Hamilton here and Bottas. Bottas has had a shocker. He is down in ninth after his first run. And I think Perez was in 10th. So we're going to try and do our best to max out the performance of this car. How quick can we be in the opening race? This is going to get us to 100% immediately, which is very good. So Sebastian Vettel... Getting ready to go out for his second run here. Gotta do the same with Lunch Stroll. Okay, okay. Here we go down to nine. What are we gonna get here? That's a nice one. Not quite a hundred percent. He is gonna have to do another run to get to a hundred percent. But that should increase his lap time and put him closer up to the front as Vettel here is following round one of the Alpines. Uh, he's still in, on, in pole position, in provisional pole position with half the session gone, which is quite impressive to be honest. Verstappen has found himself up to third, Hamilton in fourth and Lance Stroll down in seventh for us at the moment, just ahead of Charles Leclerc and Vettel has gone purple in sector one probably because of the slipstream from the Alpine purple in sector two as well and he is going to improve on his lap and stay in pole position by half a second ahead 
of Carlos Sainz and Lance Stroll goes second. I did not expect to be this quick, not at all. So, Lance Stroll second, a 1-2 at the moment provisionally. So, I don't think I'm going to send Vettel out again, uh, purely because he's already hit 100. So I don't see any improvement coming there, but Stroll, we will send out again and see if he can challenge Vettel's lap here. There we go, straight to 100% and send him out for one final lap. It looks like everyone's going out for one final lap. You can see we've come out right next to one of the McLarens. They've backed off and let Stroll go a little bit here. But uh, right now, I am very impressed. I did not expect to be this high up. Obviously, um, the, the car performance is quite close at this point. So we do have one of the better cars. Uh, I, might, I can't remember if I'm playing on hard or not. If I'm not, I will put the difficulty up. I obviously don't want to just win loads and loads of races. Um, the stroll is going slower here, despite that uh, improvement of time. And Sainz is in the pit, so he's not going to get a lap in, and he's not going to improve. Verstappen doesn't improve either, I don't think. So it looks like nobody's improved at the end of this session. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, the team did win here in real life. Uh, last season so I kind of allow this one I know we have the pace around this track um, but yeah I did not expect this I did we are gonna have a one-two in the first qualifying session which is absolutely unbelievable Sainz Jr in third as well in the Ferrari out comfortably outperforming Ocon which is very impressive and you can see here Bottas in 10th Perez in 11th we'll see the full results here as we qualify in first place on our first race as Aston Martin. Imagine if they did this in real life. How mental would that be? Fernando Alonso putting in a really strong performance in the Alpine in sixth. Daniel Ricciardo, seventh. And then uh, the Alpha Tauris, 13th and 14th. Not terrible from them. And then the Williams still way down at the back, unfortunately for them. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty accurate, actually, to real life, I would say, apart from the top three. I would have expected us to maybe be down, like, fifth and sixth. Um, but we did put in a really good showing in that qualifying. The, the mechanics did a really good job. Sebastian Vettel on pole in his first race at Aston Martin. Imagine if he does that in real life. How absolutely mental would that be? We will run down the grid here. Um, I, I actually... Vettel has a habit, I think, of being really good in his his first kind of kind of his first appearances for a new team. Obviously, with Ferrari, he started out really, really strong. Um, started out straight back to winning ways with them. So maybe he's going to do the same thing with us. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, wow! Look at that. Valtteri Bottas in tenth in the Mercedes. It is not going well for him. For a guy who you know, just came out in real life and said that he seriously thinks he can challenge for the championship this year. Game says no. Computer says no, Valtteri. Tenth place. And uh, and Perez, 11th as well in the Red Bull, is really not a strong showing from him. But we come down to the back of the grid. Giovinazzi ahead of both the Hasses. Mazepin ahead of Schumacher. Raikkonen, 18th. And then the two Williams rounding out the back of the grid. But, yeah, shame for them, really. Honestly, unfortunate. But... It's the way it, the way it is. We need to work on that car. So we are going to uh, we're going to go for improving mechanic relationship uh, for stroll. I think that is because we can't do anything about that. We have no bonuses and ten percent. Oh no, ten percent medium tire performance to stroll, and we're going to improve the relationship with Vettel. So um, yeah, I think we're going to have to go both of them on mediums to start off here to try and preserve this position and just see what the tyre wear is like. Obviously, it's probably going to be a one-stop either to the hards or the super hards, um, which, you know, in real life now are the mediums or the hards. Obviously, this game being from 2019 uh, doesn't have the updated tyres, but here we go. Five red lights. They are out. And it is a great start from Vettel. Not a good one from Stroll. He's dropped back and now he's in the clutches and Hamilton goes straight past him 
I think Verstappen's going to get him as well here, but Vettel has held the lead just from Sainz. Sainz all over his rear end. This is, uh, uh, Stroll is... Stroll is tumbling. Stroll is going to be down to about eighth here. He is fighting back with Alonso, but it is Sebastian Vettel right now that is doing all the work for us as, uh, as we start to use some ERS here. ERS, DRS, it's kind of the same thing here, but, but yeah, first place for Vettel here. Stroll still ahead of Bottas and Perez, but he has fallen behind a lot of the big guns here, and Carlos Sainz, Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Vettel putting in spectacular performances here on their debuts in their new teams, holding off the seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton, but as I say that, he goes through on Stroll and take, uh, Stroll, Sainz, and takes second place, and now, Sebastian Vettel is going to have to start looking in his rear view mirrors. We are going to put both our drivers up to attack because they've got a little bit of fuel. And you can see here, just doing that has pulled out such a margin on Lewis Hamilton. The question is, how long can we hold on to this position? It's a very, very quick track and a quick race here at Bahrain. We have to drop, uh, we have to drop them both back down to medium. Let's keep watching Sebastian Vettel leading his first race in the Aston Martin, our first race of the career. If we could take the win here, I can forgive Stroll for falling back. Obviously, he's outperformed himself, I guess, in qualifying. Although, both the Red Bulls appear here. The Red Bulls have stacked. So, on, at, the, at the end of lap four, the Red Bulls have pit early here, tried to do the undercut. But Verstappen and Perez have both come in and they are going to be stacking here. I wonder where is Stroll? Can we get closer to seeing? No, we've just gone too far. But the Red Bulls having an absolute shocker here. We are going to have to come into pit at the end of this lap and I reckon we can get away with stacking with about a six second gap between our two drivers. I reckon we can manage this. So we are going to double stack. Now, which tyres? I think we're going to have to go to the super hards. It's good that we've stretched the mediums five laps because that suggests that we can stretch the super hards 11 laps. But I, yeah, I think the best strategy is the one stop. And just we're just going to try and do the same with both of them. We're not going to do anything fancy in this first race. We're not going to try and take anything too far. You can see one worrying thing is that our tyre wear is a lot worse than the cars around us. They've got significantly more... Uh, tire performance in the bag, although you can see him, most of them come in. Are we going to make double stack work? Just about. I think Stroll's probably lost about a second there, um, stuck behind Vettel, but uh, for the most part, we've made that work. And we've come out about three seconds ahead of Sainz Jr. here. The only problem now we have to contend with is traffic. We've got uh, the Haas in front of us of Schumacher that we go past and then there is Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo these guys I believe started on the super hard so they haven't made a pit stop yet so they're running you know quite slow Bottas now leads this race having started on the hard tyres and you can see Vettel is really struggling here to you know get through these back markers and make any kind of headway and it's allowing science to close up stroll now all the way down in 17th place. Seems to be also struggling to make any kind of time on the super hard tyres. So we are going to put them both into attack and see if we can start to carve our way through these cars. Here we go, trying to get past the Williams as well now. And we do indeed, we have cleared some space. We just need to pull a gap out. We've got, it's Latifi battling Vettel. How have we gone? from comfortably leading this race to battling against backmarker cars that haven't even made their pit stops yet. You can see a stroll quite close behind Alonso, but uh, we are going to go back to watching Vettel. Obviously, he is the main man we want to see here, and we are waiting to see uh, if any of the leaders have pit. Bottas and Ocon still yet to pit, wearing those tyres down. In fact, Norris, who hasn't stopped yet on the super hards, has now got past Ocon so we are only 10 seconds behind and they are costing themselves all kinds of time here so i really don't think that that strategy has worked out for them if anything it's worked out for the cars that have been on the super hards bottas does now pit and norris will take the leaders grand prix as we close up 
to the back of one of the Alpha Tauris, make a little look down the inside, but Sonoda uses some of his uh, ERS and holds the position, but you can see there just the power difference when Vettel puts on the ERS. And we are now closing up behind Lando Norris. Is he gonna dive into the pits? Not this lap, neither of the Alpha Tauris. Stroll, what's going on? What is going on with our boy Lance Stroll? He is in that back marker pack here, fighting his way through with Fernando Alonso. Uh, it looks like Ricardo, Verstappen and Hamilton all got out uh, ahead of this little gaggle. And obviously the only back markers, back markers that they've got to find their way through here are Gasly and Sonoda. Um, Leclerc down there behind both the Hasses. And you can see Bottas. Uh, Ocon has gone onto the mediums. Bottas has opted for a second set of the hard tyres, uh, you know, the medium compound. Uh, in this race of the three um, to go to the end and he has found himself down behind Perez in 19th so now Perez and Bottas have an absolute shockers here in 18th and 19th the only driver behind them on the track is George Russell but we are going to switch our attention back to Sebastian Vettel who looks like he is going to take the race lead here I can't imagine Norris He's going to stay out for much longer on this set of tyres. They're really wearing down. He's going to use a little bit of ERS to try and pull away, but surely this lap he comes in. No, nope. looks like Lando Norris is staying out for another lap. Sonoda has come in. Gasly's still going round. And now uh, Latifi, Mazepin, Sonoda have come in, and that has allowed Stroll to find his way back up to ninth place, which obviously will be, well, at, at this rate, I think seventh once. Norris and Gasly come in for their stops which surely now no Norris still stays out Norris not giving up on this set Gasly does come in and bumps Stroll back up to eighth place which is where he was before uh, we're gonna allow our drivers to push a little bit more here um, just got to be wary of reliability you can see here we're down to the 40 percent but only have about three laps to go as Vettel comes around here comfortably in the race and finally Norris peels off into the pit lane to shed those super hards and you would assume put on a set uh, of medium tyres. Yes, indeed he does. So he is probably going to push on those to the end of the race as much as he can. Now, there's no incentive to really be watching Vettel here. He's comfortably out in front. We are just going to uh, put him back down to standard mix and tell him to conserve his tyres a little bit. Everyone around us kind of on the same tyre tire wear. But, in fact, I'm not going to tell Stroll to conserve because he's still in a fight here and we want to get as many points as possible. I think he could get Ricardo as Ocon comes in to make a second stop here. And Charles Leclerc's retired and Lewis Hamilton's retired as well. So we're seeing some mechanical issues here crop up. We've got Charles Leclerc retiring in the Ferrari, which will have alarm bells ringing for Sainz in second place. And Lewis Hamilton from fourth retiring uh, almost at the same time. So that is really going to change stuff. Stroll suddenly finds himself in fifth and now starting to look like there could be a podium on the cards as Vettel still sits for just about five seconds in front as he starts the final lap of this race. Stroll, I I just don't think he can do anything here. He's fallen into the clutch of Alonso, although having said that, uses some ERS here. Uh, we're gonna put Vettel up into Rich. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna do the same for Stroll as well. Just trying to give him all the power possible to the end of the race here. You can see there, Sebastian Vettel is going to come round. We're going to watch him here as he comes round the final corners to take the first win of the season and his first win for Aston Martin. What can Lance Stroll do here as he comes up to the line? He just keeps the position, keeps fifth place well. And Lando Norris manages to get up to eighth and take the fastest lap of the race. Look at those results though. Absolutely ludicrous. Sebastian Vettel, a race winner on his Aston Martin debut at the track where Racing Point won at the end of last season. We've done it again. 
just under a new name with a new driver. Sebastian Vettel with the win. Here is the podium. Something we rarely saw in the 2020 mod. Sebastian Vettel, first place on his debut. Sainz Jr. second on his debut in Ferrari. What a fantastic result for him. The car didn't give up, thankfully. Um, Ferrari are back, maybe? Who knows? Max Verstappen in third in the Red Bull. Here we go with the full results then. So... If we go up to the top here, Max Verstappen in the Red Bull in third. Daniel Ricciardo, a great debut as well. It really was a race for the debutants here. Um, Daniel Ricciardo, fourth in the McLaren in the end. Lance Stroll recovered to fifth after that. You would say really poor start. He, You know, after qualifying, I kind of had higher hopes. Maybe we could have got a double podium, but he just held off Fernando Alonso on his return. Uh, in the Renault team, now the Alpine team. Valtteri Bottas, absolute shocker if you ask me, should not be coming as low as seventh place. I mean, he didn't have a fun time at this track, you know, it, uh, at the Sakia Grand Prix last season. So, you know, maybe to be expected. Lando Norris eighth uh, after holding out very long. So maybe that strategy worked. I can't remember where he started on the grid, but <clears throat> could have... That strategy might have actually paid off for him there. I still think he could probably have come higher if he pit earlier, but, you know. And then the Alpha Tauris, 9th and 10th. Actually, a pretty decent result for both of them. Sonoda actually outperforming Gasly, which is quite impressive, especially given the difference in their, in their abilities. I would not have expected that. And then outside the points... Uh, we have Ocon did two pit stops, I believe. Giovinazzi, a pretty decent result. Uh, Latifi as well, uh, putting in a pretty strong showing in the Williams, outperforming Russell, Mazepin, outperforming Schumacher, who was the last of the finishers. And then the retirements, a Mercedes, a Red Bull and a Ferrari, Raikkonen, Perez, Leclerc and Kimi Raikkonen as well. I didn't, I didn't actually notice Kimi Raikkonen had retired, but... Um, but yeah, a poor debut for Perez really, he struggled in qualifying and he's, you know, struggled in the race here. Maybe it was the car that was underperforming, but, uh, but yeah, Lewis Hamilton will not be happy. I believe if you actually, uh, I, I think that's probably his first retirement as far as I can remember since 2016, which is pretty mental. Um, but yeah no points for him so that's definitely going to make the championship interesting you can see here we do top the constructors this is a mess aston martin ahead of ferrari second in the constructors mclaren third red bull fourth alpine fifth mercedes all the way down in sixth uh, and the only thing that kind of makes any sense here is the bottom three i would say um but that's just the way it goes after a chaotic first race like that the driver's standings obviously no different to uh, to the results of the race uh, but yeah that is it guys uh, I think I'm going to end it here because obviously it has been a very very long episode and I can already feel the amount of work I'm going to have to do to edit this is going to be mental so uh, I hope you appreciate it I really hope you enjoy it I'm going to try and uh, bang out as many of these episodes as I can uh, now so that I can upload them over a period of time before things get too busy uh, for me so uh, the first few episodes will probably be recorded over quite a quick succession of time and obviously they won't be as long as this episode um, but yeah I think I'm going to leave the episodes here from now on it just kind of cuts out that in between race fluff that no one really cares about and I think uh, when uh, when I come back in the next episode we'll be heading pretty much straight into uh, the Portimao Grand Prix and I will just kind of update you on the little things I've done in between as I'm, as I'm where we go and as they're needed. But yeah, extremely good first race. Uh, if you enjoyed this, slap a like on the video. Just do it. Just do it for Sebastian Vettel winning in an Aston Martin at the first race. How mental would that be? Um, you know, pole position and a win in his first race. That would be mad. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, these episodes uh, and this series in general is like kind of the flagship series on the channel that takes a lot of work um, so I will really appreciate it and I hope you appreciate the work that goes into them and I, I hope you enjoy the episode 
And uh, until next time, bye. I haven't really figured out an outro yet. <laughs> <laughs>